Hello, my name is Lad Dunfield. I'm the pastor of the St. Andrews Baptist Church here in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Many years ago, uh, Nikita Khrushchev had taken over as the head of the Soviet Union. In one of his early speeches, he undid a number of uh, issues that Joseph Stalin had brought in. And as he was talking to a large number of uh, people, he mentioned some of these things that Stalin had included that he now was trying to undermine and remove from Soviet life. While he was talking, a heckler yelled out, and he said to him, Mr. Khrushchev, you were part of Stalin's inner circle. Why didn't you do anything when Stalin was in power? Khrushchev immediately jumped up and he yelled at the top of his voice, Who said that? Who dared say that? Who dared speak like that? I want to know your name. Stand up. Silence. Total silence in the room. In fact, somebody said it seemed as if no one was even breathing. There was such fear in the air. As everyone stood and sat silent, Khrushchev said, now you know why. It's fear. Fear is a driving motive in a lot of people. We're living right now in a time of major fear. Everywhere as you go, people have become almost panic struck over COVID-19. I was watching TV the other day and the news channel seemed to run for almost a half hour straight stories on COVID. And I was thinking if that's all you watched all day. No wonder you would start to become fearful. Talking about the number of new cases, the pandemic, uh, new laws about social distancing, moving maybe from orange into red, all kinds of things just moving on that just cause people to begin to go, whoa, I never want to leave my house. I was at a restaurant and uh, one of the servers was telling me, we're so paranoid now that we don't even know what to do with our kids. We used to get them together for play dates and we would get them together to do stuff. Now we're afraid to even get together and we don't know even if we can walk together with our children. There is a fear. Stanley Jones, one of the great ministers of our time, once wrote, I am inwardly fashioned for faith and not for fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is oil, however. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is grasping for breath all the time. These are not my native air, but in faith and confidence, I always seem to breathe freely. These are my native airs. A John Hopkins University doctor says we don't know why it is that worriers die sooner than non-worriers, but it is a fact. Stanley Jones goes on to say, but I know, I, at least I think I know, we are inwardly constructed in nerve and tissue, brain, cell, and soul for having faith and courage and not fear. God made us that way. To have and live by worry is to really live against the reality of your life. We can either live by faith and trust we can believe that things will get better, and they will. We may go through a lot of storms, but things will get better. There's an amazing story told in Mark chapter 4 in the scripture about the Sea of Galilee and a storm on it. Jesus is um, asleep in a boat, and the fishermen and his disciples have taken him across the Sea of Galilee, and this huge storm comes up, and it begins to crash against the boat. And it's just smashing against it. And the waves are coming over the top. Now, these are seasoned fishermen, many of these guys, 
who have been on the Sea of Galilee all their lives, but they're panic-struck. They know the seaworthiness of their boat. They know how well they can maneuver a boat, and they also know this storm is phenomenal, and they're going to sink. So as they scurry around, they suddenly notice Jesus is sound asleep. The disciples run over to him and start talking to him, and the uh, scripture even says he's asleep on a pillow, sound asleep to the storm. And they begin to yell at him, and they say, Lord, do you not care that we are going to perish? And the Lord wakes up out of his sleep, and he says, and he woke, got up, rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? You know, as Christians, and many of us probably watching this program today are Christians, fear is not part of what is part, as Stanley Jones says, part of our natural being. We're made for faith, we're made for courage, we're made for strength against these things. And sometimes in life, God calms the storms in your life, but sometimes he doesn't, and instead he needs to calm you. You need to take the time and the energy to just step back sometime and say, you know what, COVID, it's bad, these things are not good, they are something we need to be very cautious about. We need to make, take precautions. We need to be careful. We need to not be reckless. But what we do need is not let us make us so fearful that we lock ourselves away in our homes and we never come out for weeks on end because we are so panic struck by this virus that we refuse to make any kind of a decision, do anything, or live our life at all. There was a story told about a man who in 1946, after the fall of Nazi Germany, he had been a collaborator with them. And fearful of the repercussions, he had gone and hid in his sister's home. And when he was finally found, he had spent 30 years inside that house hiding from the authorities. He finally said when they were finally discovered him and he realized that there was going to be no repercussions, everybody had moved on, he said, I used to look out the window and see people going by laughing and joking and I would cry because my life couldn't have that joy. Instead, he said, I was stuck in that house, stuck inside looking out because of fear. Well, a lot of us have found ourselves stuck in homes and stuck away and alone, actually, during this COVID. And I have a feeling, this is not a prediction or anything, but I have a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets better. I've got a feeling that we're going to go through more storms in our life. But I also know that God will take us through those storms. And sometimes, as I just said, God doesn't calm the storm, take away the COVID. Instead, he calms us so that we can get through the storms. In Psalm 27, verse 1, it reads, The Lord is my light, and he is my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of what should I be afraid? And in Psalm 52, verse 22, the scripture tells us, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let you fall. And in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, one of my favorite texts in scripture, God says, Be courageous and be strong. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. These are just few of the texts in Scripture.
that God gives us as promises for encouragement and strength within our life. He tells us that no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, no matter what is going on in your life, you don't have to be beaten by it. You don't have to be discouraged by it. You don't have to throw in the towel and give up. You don't have to hide indoors, inside your own heart, inside your own fear, and never go out. Never release yourself. Instead, when you put your faith in God, God says, I'll hold you. I'll be with you. I'll encourage you. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you to be strong. When the children of Israel went to go into the promised land in Joshua chapter 1, they had come up to the borders of the promised land the first time, but they had become frightened and they wouldn't go in. And instead they were fearful and they went and they spent 40 years in the wilderness and that entire generation died off until a new generation rose up that had faith and courage. And then they came up to the Jordan River again to, pro to enter into what is known as Palestine, Israel today. And as they looked over, God says to them, be courageous, be strong. Don't let things make you so fearful that you can't go on. Have that courage in your life to be strong. In the scripture, in Luke chapter 12, verse 22 through 26, is I'd like to finish with these texts. Why are you worrying about your life? What are you worrying about regarding what you will eat or about your body or what you wear? Life is a lot more than the food you eat and the body more than the clothes you put on yourself. Consider the ravens. They don't reap. They don't sow. They have no storeroom. They have no barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than the ravens? Who of you, and I want you to really listen to this, who of you, by worrying, can add a single life to your life, a single hour to your life? Since you can't do this very simple thing, adding an hour to your life through worry, why do you worry about everything else? And so I encourage you over the next week is when you face more and more news about COVID, when maybe you have personal hassles in your life, things that are going on that seem a bit overwhelming, why are you worried about those things? Scripture says, why do you worry about tomorrow when today has enough troubles of its own? And so I encourage you, look up, Look inward, steel yourself up. Put your trust in God. God cares about you. He thinks you're wonderful. He loves you. He'd do anything for you. So put your trust in God. Put your faith in him. And if you've never done that before and you're facing so much fear that you can't get out or you can't do anything, try praying about it. Just talk to God about it. Tell him what you feel. Tell him what the hassles are in your life. Explain it to it. Pour it out. And you'll be surprised at how good you'll feel. And you may even be surprised at how well God answers your prayer. My name is Lad Dunfield, and I'm the pastor of the St. Andrew's Baptist Church. And I'd like to say to you, if I have anything I've said is of interest to you and you'd like to be in touch with me, you can contact me, lad, at thebeggardance.com and I'd be glad to pray for you or answer any of your questions or um, anything that you uh, want to talk about. I'd be glad to, uh, to answer you on that. So thanks for watching. Stay safe. Keep courageous. Keep strong. Don't let your fears control your life, but instead remember that in the storms of life, 
God sometimes allows those storms to go on, but he will bring you comfort and you security. Thank you. Thank you.